All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, at the Natrona County Parks Board, first meeting of 2020, January, or Thursday, January 9th, uh, call the meeting to order. We'll start with a roll call. Uh, we'll start ladies first. Uh, Commissioner Kaufman here. Tina Cruz here. Dave North here. Roy Buck. Jim Miller here. All right, thank you. Um, if you would stand, we'll face the flag and have the Pledge of Allegiance. Board members have an opportunity to look over the December 5th meeting minutes. Let's make a motion to approve those minutes. Uh, motion to approve. I'll second that. Seconded. Uh, do we have any discussion on the minutes? No discussion. Uh, all in favor of approval of the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, motion passed. Um, we'll start with uh, reports. Mike, thank Good you evening, for coming. Mr. Down. Chairman uh, and board, Mike Hagler, Acting Parks Director. Uh, start off with number one there, the new Parks Director, uh, Tim Patria, will be here January 15th. Uh, we we'll welcome him aboard then. And uh, Update on the mountain well water system. I spoke with a driller yesterday that's going to take a look at uh, the plans on that, and uh, the first driller wasn't interested in that. And so we got another individual that's going to go up there and look at the site and uh, the plans, and he's going to let me know next week whether he's going to be available to do that. Right now he's out of town drilling, but. Mr. Chairman, if, if I could add to that. Um, with regard to the, the water system, I did finally hear back from the EPA um, back on uh, December 30th. I had a discussion with uh, a gentleman by the name of Matthew Longenfeld, who's, uh, I guess, taken over uh, this matter. Um, as it turns out, uh, our extension of time expired on December 1st, um, but he basically knew nothing about what was going on up here. So he sent me an email back and just based on our conversation has given us an additional extension up to and including June 1st of 2020. Um, as Mike and I discussed, um, we're not even sure that it'll be snow free by then. So we'll, we'll need to reach back out. I'm not too concerned because in that same email, he asked if I could send him a, a copy of the uh, notice of violation because he doesn't have it. So um, I think we're well ahead of the curve. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the signage update for uh, the mountain and uh, Alcova, basically, uh, I've reached out to RDG. They're a planning and design uh, company that's actually working with the city right now on that wayfinding plan uh, out of Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, they're going to take a look at giving us a, an estimate uh, of what it might cost to uh, revamp some of our signage, uh, like going up the mountain and going out the lake and then uh, on specific properties of the parks. And uh, so I'm waiting to hear back from them on that. Uh, probably no more by the next meeting. Uh, biathlon area, I had a report this morning, it's 100% groomed. Don't have any more to report there. Uh, Rotary Park, uh, there again, we contracted with Worthington Lenhart uh, in December to uh, design and bid out the building of the trail on the west side. Uh, so that's still in progress. The Ponderosa Shelter uh, spoke with Jason Gutierrez today. Uh, he's still working on those quotes that he was uh, going to get for the different designs. So I don't really have anything to report there. Uh, Pathfinder and Alcova update. Uh, the contract was signed between the county and Worthington Lenhart 
uh, to design and bid out the drainage and improvements for graveling of the roads in the cabin area site. Uh, we were out there on the 31st to look at all that again to see if we wanted to put in any more culverts or valley pans. So they're moving ahead with that. Uh, the Black Beach and Cottonwood Sandy Beach gravel projects uh, that were also proposed to the Bureau of Reclamation uh, last year um, are basically going to be put on hold right now because of the budget. Uh, we, can't, we can't accomplish all three of these with the money that's in the budget. And I've spoken with the uh, commission a little bit about that, as well as the, the Bureau of Reclamation. Uh, their, their thoughts are that the black beach and cottonwood should be done before the cabins are done. And I told them, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of all this, and I've already committed to doing the cabin areas. So uh, that's got to move ahead because we're under contract. Uh, requesting approval for the, from the BOR on the boat house dock uh, just east of the Alcova Marina. That's going to be serving the sheriff and game and fish. Uh, they're right now, they're reviewing that for the NEPA study. And once they give me the NEPA study back, we're going to go out there and do some test holes uh, and see exactly where bedrock is. Update on the drone flight. Uh, they're pretty much 95% complete with the uh, cabin, trailer, and boat club and ski club areas. And they plan on having that report fully completed and all the maps and everything pictures to us by April, as well as to the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, I also submitted a long-term road maintenance plan to the BOR to take in the cabins, the Black Beach, Cottonwood, um, they are in the review of that plan right now, and uh, I'm waiting to hear back on comments uh, if they want me to change anything. It's going to commit the parks to twice a year servicing all those roads unless there's a storm event, and we would obviously be out there before that uh, or after that to take care of any problems on the roads. And there's a cost that goes with that that I submitted to them. Um, and CPI, we amended their contract. I think you knew that to continue the work on the bathhouse and get it ready to bid out. The bathhouse has to be built and the existing uh, campsites <laughs> need to be paved. That's all part of that uh, contract for the overnight full hookups. Um, and they're on track with that. I spoke with them yesterday. And I think that brings us all of my report. There's a Any questions for Mike. I have one on the, the road maintenance plan. Do we have a line item for that currently for the maintenance? Well, you do. It's, it's kind of buried in the budget for general maintenance at the lake. But uh, in the future, it'll actually bu be budgeted. Uh, so I have its own line item. Yeah, because I mean, right now, there hasn't been much maintenance on those roads. Sandy right. Beach is actually a county road, so Road and Bridge takes care of it. But uh, the Bureau's willing to allow us to use some of their funds to put mag chloride on that. So that's part of that plan I submitted to them. And, uh, but yeah, in the future, future, there will be a definite line item for that maintenance so that the parks has some way of doing it, either by contractor internally. Okay. Mike, how much over would the budget be for uh, for doing Black Beach and Cottonwood? Well, it's uh, it's an estimate right now. It's it's upwards of uh, probably three three hundred and fifty thousand. It's probably very similar to Black Beach, uh, same cost. Uh, until I actually get that bid out, I won't really know. But I mean, just raw numbers that I can compute. It's 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 more. There there was a quote on doing uh, the cabin areas, just the grading and the gravel, and it was 280000 That didn't include any culverts or valley pans or okay. the like. Okay. 
Thank you. Alrighty. Um, Eric, did you have anything to add as far as updates? Um, Mr. Chairman, I do not. Okay. Commissioner Kaufman, did you have anything to add to any of that? Thank you. Anything from the board as far as, uh, Jim, would you want to give us kind of a update on what's going on on the mountain as far as uh, Nordic trails and such, to your knowledge? Well, update on the snow footage. We have 12 foot as of uh, yesterday. The trails are being well maintained. Uh, the total facility is supposed to possibly arrive in October. Um, November, they, the contractor, subcontractor that was working on the vault put it in the door in wrong. So they had to tear out the front side to redo it. So the last comment I had from them is uh, they're just about ready to ship it. Um, we will delay that shipment because we can't put it in. Um, other than that, things are going well on the mountain. The uh, had great response with the with Terry and Amy uh, Thomas with the um, meals at the lodge. Um, the only complaint that I hear is they're having problems with people not being ticketed or buying passes to snowshoe or ski. And one of the comments that one of the people that Terry had asked for if he had purchased a ticket, it indicated that he hadn't bought a ticket in 20 years and he wasn't about to. So, <laughs> so that's the issue we have up there is, is sometimes uh, there's no one there to check passes. So it's been uh, rather bothersome for those folks up there. Let's see, uh, Special Olympics has something coming up on uh, within the week. Um, the high school junior high program, they're out of town this week. And other than that, I'm not aware of any events. I know they, the grooming is taking place on the uh, the sled, uh, snow, <coughs> snow machine trails, and they're very well uh, groomed and whatnot. They, in fact, they groomed again last night, and uh, snowmobile snow people are very happy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Dave, did you have anything? <coughs> I know, put you on the spot. Not right now, I don't. Tina, anything? Very good. Uh, moving right along here. Uh, Eric, would you like to talk to us about the uh, rules and regulations process that we're going through? Uh, <clears throat> absolutely, Mr. Uh, Chairman. <clears throat> Excuse me. So by way of background, uh, the board met uh, twice, uh, once in December, and I think the last time was on January 2nd um, in work sessions to work through uh, some proposed changes. Um, and at the time, it was discussed that the next step, um, as these are, are completely in draft form at this point, would be to have a town hall um, type meeting um, to solicit input from uh, the public on the proposed changes. Um, I believe that the date that we discussed on the 2nd was January 28th. And what I'll be looking to the board this evening for is some direction on how uh, that uh, meeting will be uh, structured. Um, I do have some proposals and recommendations. Uh, the first would be uh, with regards to location, I think uh, my recommendation would be to have it here in this room uh, for a number of reasons. Um, uh, primarily we have, as, as some of you might notice, uh, new audio and video equipment. Uh, so in case you didn't realize uh, that this evening's meeting is being video uh, taped. And, uh, and we will at some point, um, we, we just got this uh, up and running on Tuesday. 
And I think that uh, we will have the ability to live stream the meetings at some point. Um, but if, if not live stream, we'll be having a, a county YouTube channel. So folks, if you miss a meeting, you can uh, hop on that YouTube channel and uh, be able to uh, uh, watch, watch the meeting, uh, whether it's a county commission meeting, a park meeting, uh, planning and zoning. So, so hopefully that'll, that'll uh, help us get the message out and, and make sure everybody's well informed. So, so that would be one, I think, positive of having it here. Um, secondly, I think it, uh, the location lends itself to, to that type of uh, input because we have, uh, for folks who are hearing impaired, um, we have the, the ability to, to help them out. Um, and and so, so that would be my recommendation. We can certainly talk about other locations, but uh, I think it really makes sense to have it here. I'll probably start about the same time and then and go until uh, we're finished. Um, what I would propose is that uh, I would be uh, start the meeting off by giving an introduction and a recap of uh, the changes that uh, have been at least preliminarily made in the draft. Um, and then in, in addition, um, and I'm, I'm sure some of you already have concerns about uh, the legality of some of the uh, potential changes, uh, I would propose giving an, an overview from legal um, as to what the ramifications of some of the changes might be legally, and, and just overall give, a, give a, uh, a recap of the legal framework within uh, which we're operating so that uh, when we do start to uh, receive public comment, um, folks have, have kind of a frame of reference. Um, also, what I'd like to get some, some uh, direction from the board this evening is uh, how do we want to disseminate the, the draft uh, uh, rules to the public. Um, I know some folks have gotten copies. Um, I, I would propose that we uh, set uh, a site up on the county webpage. I'm sure uh, Eileen and, and IT can help us do that so that it's easily accessible and then do some uh, uh, PR work to, to let folks know that it's there. Um, obviously, uh, for those without uh, uh, connectivity to the internet, um, they could always come here and, and, and get hard copies as well. Um, on the second, we, we discussed uh, steps after the 28th, and, and one uh, thing that I would like to, to mention that was discussed is, is doing an online survey. And uh, I think um, for the public's benefit, there was some discussion on the second of, as to the timing of that survey, whether we wanted to do it prior to, to, to our town hall. Um, but I think there was an acknowledgement that there may be issues that we're not even um, aware of yet. And so in order to, to put together the best survey that we can and, and really cover all the bases, uh, I think it was decided we would wait until after the 28th so we can kind of digest the feedback from the public and, uh, and then put together an online survey to, to gather uh, yet some additional um, information. Um, next steps uh, from that point, I think, are a little bit... Um, up in the air, I think that there would be uh, an opportunity if we, if the board feels like we're pretty close um, to making a recommendation to, to the Board of County Commissioners, we could put it on the February Park Board uh, agenda for uh, potential uh, approval of a recommendation to initiate the rule changes. Um, but I think after the 28th, if, if there's still some work to be done, uh, we would be looking at having another work session and then probably yet another uh, opportunity for public comment. Um, <clears throat> at, at whatever point uh, the board uh, makes that recommendation to initiate, uh, we'll start the formal rulemaking process uh, under uh, Title 16 of Wyoming statutes. Um, uh, any county regulations are considered administrative rules under Wyoming statute. And as such, uh, you have to have a minimum of a 45-day official public comment period. Um, um, depending on where we're at, we may or may not have uh, uh, yet another opportunity um, for, for a town hall type uh, listening session. Um, but it will culminate then uh, with a BOCC meeting at which it will be conducted as a contested case hearing um, under the uh, administrative rules and the public will have an opportunity to either uh, comment in favor or against uh, the adoption of those rules, um, at which point uh, the county commissioners will have the, make the final determination as to the adoption of the rules. And of course, at that point, they, they can make some modifications. So um, it's, a, it's a lot of information, but I guess I, I wanted to uh, kind of lay out as how I see this process um, 
playing out. Um, I think even if it went forward as fast as possible, we're probably looking at an April timeframe for the BOCC to consider adoption of rules. Um, uh, most likely, I'm guessing we're probably into the beginning of May. So um, lots of opportunities um, for uh, the public to, to comment and weigh in. Oh, I guess the other thing I, I would say is, of course, at any time, um, during this process from, from here on out, um, we would entertain and certainly welcome written comments. Um, and, and I think what we ought to do is probably on the website, um, put some instructions on to where these can be um, sent so that we can compile them and, and have a full complete record of, of commentary. So, so with that, uh, Mr. Chair, um, I'll uh, bring my long diatribe to a conclusion and um, um, ask if there's any questions from the board and, and then certainly um, um, look for some guidance. Questions, comments? So Eric, I just, I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page on this. We're actually gonna wait. We'll start taking written comments immediately, but we're gonna, we're looking at waiting until the 28th to have the, the open discussion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, so certainly tonight we're going to have a public comment period, and um, I think that you know legally the public can comment on anything they want, um, and, and certainly if you want to make comments about about the rules in their draft form, you're certainly welcome to. Um, I, I guess I would just add that there will be more to come, and and I think on the 28th we'll have much more time, and we'll have a much more robust presentation um, uh, on the rules. So, so yeah, I think that the intent of the board is that, that the 28th will be solely um, dedicated to, to receiving comment on the rules. But, but again, during public comment period, you know, it's kind of your dime, your dance floor. So whatever you want to comment on. Okay. That, I mean, that's, that's kind of my understanding is that what, that's what we were going to do is that was going to be a dedicated meeting specifically for that, and you're correct. Uh, open comments. Anybody can say what they want to when it's that time. Uh, you know, it's your choice, but it'll be a lot. I mean, the meeting on the 28th will be specifically designed for the rules and regulations. Right, yeah, that would be the only subject of that meeting. Basically, it's a, a town hall type forum where people could come in and, and uh, give public comments to the rules and regulation draft proposal. And uh, the only thing that I would uh, just mention here is the public comment period will most likely be, uh, because of time constraints, we obviously are not gonna spend 24 hours debating the rules and regulations. So public comments will be brief, but your written comments can be whatever you submit. So I'm, I'm assuming that uh, Eileen will most likely be able to provide some kind of a forum that we can get written comment through the website. So you'd have that opportunity if you wanted to submit uh, written paperwork, examples, whatever. Um, you could probably get that to um, either one of the board members or possibly what Michelle could, could take those comments uh, in the office on the second floor uh, so you could drop off written comments there uh, there are all kinds of avenues that you can get your input for uh, for any issues or comments that you have as far as the draft rules and rakes but the the public comment period i'm ju just want to kind of forewarn people that, uh, that that most likely is just going to be limited to a few minutes and then after that uh, as Eric Nelson has mentioned uh, following that first meeting when we kind of see where the where the path is taking us then we would uh, want more online comments through possibly a survey mechanism or something like that um, Commissioner Kaufman did you have any input as far as that no, I appreciate that you guys outlined that we would do that after that open house or the public forum. And then I know that there's been a suggestion to reach out. There's someone in the audience and then potentially working even with a vendor in town to make sure that those aren't uh, guided, guided questions or I, I'm not saying that right, but that we get fair and adequate feedback that way. So no, that would be it. Okay. So that, 
I think uh, as far as the process as I'm kind of writing down here, uh, we're looking at having the town hall style meeting here January 28th at 5.30 p.m. in this chamber. Uh, we will outline the draft proposal. Uh, Eric Nelson will talk about some of the legal issues and ramifications that have gone into the, the draft proposal. Um, we may have a little bit of discussion amongst the board and then the, the remainder of that meeting would just be public comment period. And then we would ask for written comments at any time uh, between now and then and afterwards. Um, and then following that meeting, when we see kind of uh, where we're at as far as if we have a riot on our hands, we may have a second public comment period uh, if we have to over do some overhaul. Uh, and then looking at the survey results, uh, my guesstimate would be we're probably not gonna be able to approve, do any approval in the February meeting. There's just not enough time. So we're probably looking at a March at the earliest date, our, our regular March board meeting for uh, potentially approving and sending those on to the BOCC. So is that kind of what everybody understands? So is that what you were looking for, Eric? Mr. Chairman, I, I, yeah, if that's uh, the desire of the board, I think that is, is completely doable. And I guess I would, I would add um, one other thing as we uh, work with IT to get some notices posted and so forth, certainly um, uh, would welcome comments on any and all uh, proposed changes to the rules. I think that during the work session, there were a couple of areas that uh, really stuck out as perhaps uh, being more contentious. And so we're, I think, the, speaking for the board, we're, we're certainly uh, eager to get some input on those. Um, and just briefly stated, I think uh, we had some robust discussion on drone usage uh, in the parks. Uh, that was one. Um, two um, was Rotary Park generally, um, um, hours of operation year round versus seasonal usage, and then usage of the bridal trail. And I don't think these are gonna be any surprises to the folks uh, in the audience. Um, but uh, I think we've identified those as, as probably where uh, we'll be looking for, for the most feedback. So again, feel, feel free to comment on any, any part of it, but uh, those in particular seem to uh, have engendered the most robust discussion amongst the board. Thank you. Any other comments? But, board but, comments? Go ahead. Well, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that we won't be voting on anything on the 28th, that basically we're going to be here to listen and see what the public has to say you know and so it's going to be just a time for you to express for the most part mm -hmm. what your thoughts are at that time so that the board can all hear that yeah so the and thank you for for mentioning that but uh, we'll, we'll be taking all of the comments from hopefully as many user groups as we can get involved in the process and incorporating those into the rules and regulations. Uh, I guess my goal with this process would be that we don't have to come back and revisit this again in 12 months. We should have a document that we can, can utilize for, for several years. So that, that's my goal out of this deal. The other advantage is that we'll have a uh, new Parks and Leisure Services Director <laughs> on board then, so he that's can be on the hot title. seat besides instead of Mike. <laughs> Any other discussion or comments? Mike, did you want to talk to us about the permits? I, uh, in your packet, you should have a application from Kim Forgey uh, for trailer 55, replace a roof, windows, doors, and siding. Staff recommends approval. It's kind of a crude drawing, but we deciphered it. So Mike recommends approval. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve. So moved and seconded. Uh, do we have any question or discussion? No discussion, we'll call for the vote. Uh, 
All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, that, uh, that uh, passes. Do we have any other permits? No, not at this time. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Once again. That was easy enough. Um, the election of officers, I'm going to run this by Eric real quick, but because Stuart's not here tonight, I would like to defer that to the next meeting. Mr. Chairman, I think if that's the collective uh, opinion of the board, I have no problem. I think you continue to serve in your capacity as an officer until such time as we hold elections, but I think it's for you guys to collectively decide. Anybody have any heartburn with that? So we'll plan on doing the, the election of officers at the uh, February regularly scheduled meeting. One issue with that, I'm not, I won't be here because I'm killing me. <laughs> <laughs> visiting my mom who's ill, so. How about March? Yep. Are you going to be March. here in March? All right, we'll, we'll uh, check and see. I, I just would like to do that on a night when we have all five board members present. Either that or we're just going to make Stuart the next chairman when he's not here. We'll move on to uh, public comments then. Uh, we invite the public to speak on any matter uh, uh, be you know be aware of the decorum, and I would also ask that you keep your comments in the four to five minute range. Give everybody an opportunity to speak. And with that, I would invite invite uh, whoever wants to come up. Going once. There we go. Hello. <clears throat> if you would please state your name. My name is Kenny Mayer, uh, almost Casper native, and lucky enough to be president of North Platte Wallace Unlimited here in Casper. I'm here to speak about the uh, deteriorating conditions, deteriorating conditions at Pathfinder Reservoir, and the safety issues that uh, could possibly uh, be better. Uh, we had a good fundraising year last year, and uh, to cut to the chase, we're here to help. We've got some funds available that we've allocated for possible lights and docks out there right at the moment. And right now I uh, am in the investigatory process of seeing if we can get anything done. I have sent letters to Commissioner Kaufman and other people to see if uh, it's possible that we can participate and help uh, improve Pathfinder Reservoir. That's it. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's quick as it. Four or five minutes. But. Commissioner Kaufman, have you spoken to the Walleye Club as part of your rounds? So actually, I believe we have a meeting scheduled on the 13th. Monday, In yes, my office, that's right. Yep, so we, we have and we'll be connecting. Perfect. Yeah. So this is this is what we're looking for. These these meetings, uh, people that are not aware, uh, Commissioner Kaufman and Tina Cruz and Jim Miller have been working, going around, talking to different user groups to try to get a little more detailed uh, just any issues, comments, input uh, to help direct the Parks Board going forward. And uh, th so this is just part of that process. Well, and go ahead. Well, I know I've talked to Joe and some of the other guys yes. uh, from Walleye Club. And <clears throat> we've actually talked about some of that stuff at some of the meetings yes, sir. As, as far as moving forward. And there's some things that we can move forward with easily. And some things are going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, with the Bureau of Requ uh, Requirements and stuff like that. There are a few hoops that. that we have to jump through. Figured that out. Um, but I know that that's, that's something that the board's happy to, to work with you on, and, and I know the county commissioner is, commissioners are too, so anything we can do to improve you know, what we have out there is going to be good. Absolutely. It's a little dark out there. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank well, you. and I would just like to say thank you for being here. Thank you for presenting yourself. And uh, it's good that we're, we're now hearing from Pathfinder groups. I'd say in my term as a board member, we haven't heard anything from, from Pathfinder users until the early 2019. So it's good to have you in the loop and, and uh, that we can work together making some some stuff happen out there so thank you 
Absolutely, it's needed. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Douglas Irvin. I live at 6835 South Rotary Park Road. And uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I have a few questions pertaining to the proposed park rules and reg revisions regarding Rotary Park and the bridle trail as it's currently drafted. I really want this to be a interactive Q&A session. So I'll start off with a few questions. Does the county own all the, bri the property that the bridal trail traverses? Um, I would just say that we're happy to listen to any of your comments, but I don't think we're going to do like a question and answer session tonight. You're ha I'm happy to, or the board is happy to, to hear any comments that you have regarding that. Um, there are several ways that we can accomplish that. Like I, I mentioned before, uh, we'd like to keep the comments tonight down to like the four to five minute range. Uh, if you have a lot of questions, uh, we could put those in a written form. We'd be happy to get those back to you. I'm and, uh, waiting for the response to the previous uh, letter I emailed, and it was distributed to the board, and I did not get a response yet. So I am really looking forward to a dialogue session because we need to establish some ground rules and I'm understanding the board's position on a few items that have no place in a public discussion that is proposed for the 28th. Well, I, we kind of laid out the guidelines as far as how we plan on going forward the, with the public and uh, comment and written comments. Um, okay, then I shall answer for you if you're not going to answer then. Okay, since the question was, does the county own all the property on the bridal that the bridal trail traverses? The answer is no. How has legal public access been secured to and across these portions across private land? The answer to that is through easements with the private landowners. Do one or more of the easements carry limitations on the permitted use of those portions of the trail that cross private land? The answer is yes. There are at least one, probably more than one, that restrict them to pedestrians and equestrians only. Are there any contiguous loops that do not include portions crossing private lands with these limited access easements? The answer is no. Has the county installed any signage on the sections governed by limited use easements indicative of these limitations, specifically hiking and, and equestrians only? The answer is no. Another question is why not? Is the county sponsoring encouragement of illegal trespass by this inaction and by the continued uh, inclusion in the drafts of permissive language when there is obvious and established legal prohibitions with the county's in place agreements with the private landowners that give us the bridal trail? That is a very troubling position to have county officials such as yourselves proposing and opening up for supposed public comment a pre-established legal agreement between landowners and the county. There is no discussion about those existing signed agreements. Has the board organized a committee, including the neighboring landowners and easement holders, to discuss the current draft rules and regulations? No, why not? What was the result of the last meeting with the landowners and easement holders that was held? Do you even know when that last meeting was? Mm -hmm. There was one on April 17th, 2019, mm -hmm. and all involved brought up this subject and their concerns. Eric Nelson was there. We have tons of notes about what was discussed there. And this is not a new issue. How does the board justify including any permissive language with regards to bicycle use on the bridal trail when there's no pre-established legal right 
for the county to unilaterally override the existing easement restrictions. How does the board feel these types of actions, blatantly ignoring prior legal agreements with landowners, will influence future efforts to expand public trails on Casper Mountain through similar easement negotiations with private landowners? Has the commission, what, have you ever commissioned studies on the said topic? Answer, yes. I would like to read you an excerpt from the trail system assessment and conceptual plan that was previously emailed for distribution to the board. Under the heading, this was part of the 2014 KLJ survey. Under the heading of recreation stewardship on private lands, and I quote, continued proactive management of these situations can only help to allay more concerns and open up more opportunities over time. Additionally, promotion of the fact that the county is willing and able to partner in helping to manage for positive, non-degrading use of its neighbor's properties and goodwill is a message that needs to reach the community at large. Without this positive messaging, backing up proactive outreach and management, it is likely that negative messaging created by individual incidents or even hearsay will continue to dominate attitudes and expectations. So there's an example of a work product commissioned by the county encouraging working with landowners to increase public access. And yet, here we have a case of this board recommending in draft rules language that is stepping and trampling on a prior agreement with landowners giving us access to this amazing trail. Does the board feel the risk of the county entering into legal action by landowners and potentially having the easements terminated due to the county violating their provisions through active or tacit measures is worth the benefit to a small user group that has alternative recreational opportunities on the mountain? And if so, why? So I take your, your comments, uh, thank you. Um, the board have any questions for Doug? Doug, I was involved in some of those landowner meetings, um, and I understand exactly where you're coming from on that. Uh, there was a big discussion on that when we when we went through this, and there were some modifications and stuff that were done, <clears throat> and that's one reason, you know, on the 28th. We want to bring all that stuff up and talk to it, you know, and address those issues. Um, that was disseminated, your letter was disseminated to all each of the board members by Eric. Um, I wasn't under the impression that we were supposed to respond to it or else I would have. That's um, you know, it was an information email so that we understood where it was coming from. But there's been a lot of things that have gone on that need to be addressed and they need to be talked about in a public forum. And that's part of the reason why we're, we're setting the town hall so that we can get that out. And that's the reason why we want to make sure that people can address things, you know, in a written format. So not only Eric can look at it, but also so the board members and the county commissioners can look at it too before we get to that point. So I appreciate you coming forward and talking to us tonight. My major concern is that the draft it is is, including a question as whether bicycles can be permitted or not, this appears on the surface to be blatantly illegal. You already have established agreements that state that bicycles are not allowed on those easements. Am I incorrect? We, we, we understand that. Uh, we, we talked about that at length in the last rules meeting uh, on the third that Dave was mentioning, and that subject did come up. We have written agreements with landowners that state the, the usage not including bicycles. We all get that. Okay. My, I would just like to state the purpose of this board, the existence of this board, 
is to advise the Board of County Commissioners. And the only way we can do that is by getting all of the public comments, all of the public input uh, regarding any proposals that come before the County Parks Board. So the inclusion of whether bikes will or won't be allowed on the trail is simply to promote discussion both ways. There's no, there's no pressure, there's, there's no uh, binding anything to that. This is a draft rule and regulation. It's a, it's a draft in progress. And yeah. all this board, our purpose is, is to gather these comments on both sides so that we can make good decisions with full knowledge of all of the facts going forward. And, and my opinion on this is that we would be doing a disservice to this community by simply saying, nope, because we have these landowner agreements, we will not hear this side and, and their issues and, and uh, arguments towards, towards their opinion. Have that, you that's received legal rulings that would indicate the county has any authority for regulating and overriding the easements. Yeah, in uh, if you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Irvine, I, I absolutely hear what you're saying, and I was present at these meetings that you have referenced. And here's a little foreshadowing: I'm probably going to be saying a lot of the similar things that you just recited on the 28th. I think part of the um, uh, so 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 I guess I agree with some of your substantive comments. I, I don't necessarily. Uh, agree with some of the conclusions you draw, and I think that the the the, the thought process, and, and, and I'm kind of speaking for the board here, was to leave it in the alternative, not only to uh, receive public comment, but so we can go through this process and allow stakeholders to understand that bicycles are not allowed on certain easements because of the legal agreements in place. I don't think that there was any intention that, that this was going to somehow override the legal agreements in place. I mean, I, I'm on the record in the past, and I'll be on the record on the 28th, that, that the current agreements don't allow it. And, and I would be remiss and, and probably be a derelict in my duty if I were to advise the county or the board to, to pass a law that would be in violation of our legal agreements. So that being said, I think it's, 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 it's an attempt to be completely transparent, not only with the landowners, but with the stakeholders. And as you can see from the process that I tried to outline, we're taking every precaution to allow multiple opportunities for, for input. And so, and I certainly, so I certainly hear what you're saying. Um, we might disagree in, in, in some of the, the conclusions, but um, you know, there'll be more to come, I guess. Yeah, we will address these concerns in, in, in full detail on the 28th. Okay, my final comment would be that keeping the permissive language in the draft without having a prior discussion, I think the proper way of approaching this is saying, this is the current reality, these are our legal limitations that is driving the wording that would be exclusive of bicycle use if we have a public that is interested in pursuing opening that access up, then that would give the board the ground to recommend to have Eric pursue and find what legal options there would be to do that. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what we're doing. Yes, but in keeping the draft wording such as, well, are we gonna allow it or not? That gives the miss nomer or the misapprehension that the board has the legal authority to grant that permission yeah, and which and they do not i, I get it okay. we, we get it so that's that's something we'll take under advisement yeah, i would uh, say that would be a good it'll be a point bit before we in the overview. post those on on the website so we will take that under advisement thank you thank you next My name is Kathy Toops, and I live um, at 702 Divine. And I wanted to say that we feel so strongly and are so concerned about your lack of respect for the law, trespass laws, that we have um, initiated conversation with Mountain States Legal Foundation, and we have a case number, and they are looking at supporting us. They have gone all the way to the Wyoming Supreme Court 
um, in fighting some of the bicycle trails that are trying to take over um, rails for trails when there's no legal right for it. And I just want to say that I 100% agree with um, Doug that what if we had a discussion about whether we were going to park all of our boats and trailers at your backyard? Would that be okay with you? Would that be something that we could just go ahead and have that discussion? What if it's not legal? And so I think that this is a weaselly way to try to get around the fact that the trespass laws in Wyoming say that people who own their property have a right to their property. Any uh, questions for Kathy? We appreciate you coming up. Yeah, we do. And I will you. continue with Mountain State Seneagle because we're not going to roll over and agree to this just because there's a small group who want this. There's, thou there's thousands of acres in Wyoming, thousands of acres up on Casper Mountain over in Ponderosa Park that are available, and we're not going to just let them do this. Okay, we got it. Thank you very much. Next, come on up. How are you doing? My name is Brian Woodward. I'm actually a manager of Rocky Mountain Discount Sports and a former uh, uh, president for the North Platte Walleye Club. So I really hope that um, you'll take them up on some proposals and some of their funding that might be available because we've um, done fundraising. And one of the things about the Walleye Club here in Casper is that Money stays locally. It's all a volunteer program. Um, we do a big fundraiser in March, All You Can Eat Walleye Banquet, that uh, we got a lot of support. And that funding, we, we want to use it to increase uh, public use on, on our waterways and, and walleye fishing particularly. But they donate a lot of money to kids' fishing events, Yesness Ponds. And uh, we have donated docks and that stuff in the past. So thank you for listening to um, them and the proposals that they may have. Um, Couple of things, just as uh, I was listening today. Um, I mean, the Nordic Nordic track and stuff. Um, being at Rocky Mountain, obviously, it helps us. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, sales and snowshoes and that type of stuff. But um, that has sparked a um, question to me: is that a lot of people come in thinking that they can buy a pass from us, and so I don't know if you offer those passes at other retailers. Um, but that would be something that we would definitely like to maybe uh, venture mm -hmm. into. We already do, you know, the state county or state parks, and we do all that kind of stuff. ORV tags, snowmobile tags. So, uh, if it's a if it's a possibility, we would definitely like to consider um, possibly being an outlet for you for those um, Nordic passes. Uh, plus, it would help educate us in terms of what you know. The, if you have trail maps, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I think people in general want to do the right thing. Um, you know, in terms of you know. You had a gentleman say that he would never buy a pass or until he gets you know, whatever. <laughs> but I think in general, most people want to be legal and they want to do things. But a lot of times we just don't give them the accessibility to purchase those ORV tags. Or maybe we close too early and they couldn't, they're going out hunting the next day and it's the first of the year and they couldn't get their ORV tag. Uh, so availability, sometimes just poor planning on people's parts. But uh, just have the accessibility and if we could provide another outlet for you to, to um, retail those for you, uh, we'd be interested in doing that. Um, I also had a couple other people recently uh, in regards to the Pathfinder and probably just county parks in general. Uh, we do off, you know, we sell state park passes for day use. Um, and boy, we're, we're awful busy this time of year because state parks offer um, discounted programs if they purchase their tags before a certain time frame. So it does get people interested the first of the year. They know they have to get their day use passes, their camping passes and that type of stuff already lined up. And I've had a couple of people just, you know, comment, you know, why doesn't the county, you know, for camping purposes, why don't, why doesn't the county offer um, camping permits available? Um, you know, so whether they have the right change at the drop box or, you know, whatever, it just would be a convenience for them. And again, it gives people another opportunity, good funding program for you, but it gives people an opportunity to maybe purchase their passes early so that they don't have to uh, worry about trying to find a drop box or whatever that case is. So I don't know if you guys have considered, you know, camping permits or day use um, 
permits, but uh, I've had a couple of people that have come through the store that have inquired about that, so that's all. Uh, two, two quick things, uh, Nordic Pass Sales, uh, contact the County Road and Bridge Office, probably talk to Glenna in there and she can lead you in the right direction as far as Nordic Pass Sales. Uh, camping permits, I would say that we, uh, we, the county is looking at a, an online system for reserving camping spots. And so we're trying to move to the electronic age with that. Um, I don't know, Commissioner Kaufman, if you have any input on that, uh, or Tina. Yeah, I was just going to say, so I know we are, I was going to have Mike come up and have staff give a report on an update on, for the online reservations, but I also just looked at Eileen and I'm like, are we close on the day passes <laughs> online? She's like, we're this close. So you can buy a season pass online, but the day pass has not historically been available, but if you have customers in your store in short order, they'll be able to just go right online and get the pass for the day, for the trails. Yeah, oh, for either for the season or the day, okay. that'll be available. And Mike, I don't know if you have any comments on, we have talked at length and various times about bringing online camping reservations to, uh, to the county, but I'm not sure where we are. It, we, are we are going in that direction. Uh, we've, uh, we've had one meeting with the people that provide that. Uh, a lot of the state parks already have it. So you can go online and you can look at all the camping spots. You can look at the amenities, uh, rotate through a, a picture, ceramic deal, and look at everything that's there, trees or no trees, and then pick your spot and... You can pick multiple spots even and see whether it has water or sewer or whatever. That part's really neat. And the other part that's really neat is the county doesn't handle any money in the field anymore. To answer uh, his question is to, to sell camping uh, permits at any one location doesn't work because what spot are they going to go in? Uh, the lake is first come, first serve. And so if you sell it and they get out there and there isn't anything, then we've got another problem and you know certain times of the year that's true other parts of the year it's not true but that's a difficult thing because we don't really know where they're going to go we don't know if that spot's available so that probably wouldn't work very well uh, in my opinion Mr. Chair, though, it, it, Mike, as far as like an outlet to sell the ski um, trail passes, oh, we yeah. can do that. And if you want to get yeah. into, if, if you're okay with it, just get in touch with me. We've got a kind of a standard form contract we put together, and there's a couple other outlets around town that yeah, sell them. We can do that. And it, that's, that's a real easy fix. I'd like to say, like, in, in regards to Mike was saying that how the, pat, the camping permits wouldn't work, it may not work for Alcova as a county, but for Pathfinder, where there's not really designated numbered spots, established spots. Everybody knows they're gonna be dry camping and they're just gonna be pulling up to a random place anyways. So, I mean, I think, you know, it's, for one, it would cut down on your manpower. I mean, you're, you've got a ranger that's running through there trying to collect, collect up on everybody and she, she drives by a vehicle and sees that there's a camping permit. She doesn't have to knock on a door, or have, doesn't have to go to a, a fee booth and doesn't have to look at a report to see, okay, was this, you know, vehicle license, as long as it's got a pass on the windshield, you know, um, I think, and, and maybe, it, maybe it has to be Pathfinder specific, you know, because I know Al Alcova, you, there would certainly be a chance we could get there and there wasn't there was oh, a spot yeah. available. But I think everybody, like when I buy my state park pass and I use Glendo on a regular basis, I know that I'm going to have to drive around and look for a, a spot. And, all, and if I really wanted a spot, there are designated numbered locations that either have power or hookups or whatever the case is that will accommodate my, my vehicle and my, my camping situation. So that part is nice. I don't think we're anywhere close 10 years away from Pathfinder for that being an opportunity or a situation, but um, I think just a, a camping permit in general where it's a, a person that uses it on a fairly regular basis, I mean, might as well get their money up front and, and uh, make it easier for them, easier yeah, it, to comply. So. It'd have to be specific. Yeah, we've, we've talked about it. It's, there's a lot of questions that go into that because we're dealing with so many different diverse areas. Sure. So, but thank you for your comments. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Next. Hello, everybody. My name is Eric Ani, 1028 South Beach. Hi. Um, I guess I'm here, first of all, <clears throat> a little bridal trail history. If everybody's not aware or they are aware 
Bridal Trail was a project um, initiated in 1939 by the WPA, which kind of ran parallel to the CCC. Uh, this was an opportunity to get people to work. Um, and how these programs worked were, it was a federal program. Eric, I'm sure you know this, you, you, you researched this uh, in depth. Um, and the, the projects were done in cooperation with landowners and uh, local uh, government agencies. So the Bridal Trail is a WPA project. It was done as a federal project in cooperation with the landowners. Just because there aren't legal agreements that we can dig up doesn't mean that the intent isn't there. So Ms. Toops, I would fully encourage you guys to, to push forward with the legal part of this. I think this really does need to finally go to court and go to bed. Um, the, the, uh, and that would include all the original bridal trail corridors, which were um, provided happily by the landowners to construct this system. So um, it, we've kind of systematically dismantled uh, this public amenity. And, and I think the counties doesn't quite know how they fit into this. I think the landowners are kind of getting a, 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 you know, a notion that, that they can dictate how these, uh, this access works. Um, and and I, believe me, I'm, I, I own land and I don't want easements on my property either. Nobody wants easements on their property. Um, but it came with it. Uh, so um, I'm making these statements, of course, that's assumed that the courts would um, side with the public and with these, these projects that happened all across the country. Um, and it'd have, it'd have you know, wide-reaching ramifications if all of a sudden you start dismantling these projects that happened in 1939, um, then they could start just chiseling away at all the other stuff that's out there that the public has been using for the last 80 years. So um, I, think, I think this is a, I think it's a great opportunity. I think the landowners should, should kind of push it, and I think the users should push it. I think the county should step back a little bit and let the chips fall where they may. I guess that's, that's kind of where I'm at with the, with the bridal trail. So, any questions? Appreciate your comments. You bet. Thank you. Next. Going once. There we go. Todd Glazier. I live at 1033 South Ash. I'm not real familiar with these meetings, but uh, I'm also a member of the Walleye Unlimited. Joe turned me on to this. Um, he's telling me it's not the right meeting to really proceed with this, but I'm just concerned about the road down to Bishop's Point, and you have uh, permitted camping now, so you're generating funds. And is there any extra maintenance or plans to improve the road down to Bishop's Point? We use the, the, the road all year long in the summertime, like every single week. And it's just, it's hard on your vehicle, it's hard on your boat. Just didn't know if there was some plans for that road or extra, I know they worked on a little bit this year, and I'm sure you get a lot of this, but it's just a really rough road, you know? And I know it's hard to maintain, and then people go down there in the, in the winter time and the snow, and they just tear the road up trying to get down there, and then it's like a waste of time to even try to fix it, but for the people that just go down there in the summer, it's, it's really rough. And just wondering if there was any plans to improve that at all. It's, it's on the radar, but I can't tell you a date. Yeah, okay. that, that's been discussed. Do you have like, I, what's, what's the plans exactly like? Mike, um, Mike you that road just to, needs you know, to be brought up that? to more rigid specifications. It really was just <laughs> graded It's still in. a gravel road, but better maintained it needs better. to have better materials better maintenance right. which in, in equates to lots of money yeah. yeah well it's just like the mud hole out there that everybody knows about that keeps getting bigger and bigger it gets yeah. wider and wider every year they did a lot to it this year and it was really a lot better yeah. but. but i mean that that's the kind of thing though that uh yeah it's going to take a lot of a lot of base course on top of that mm -hmm. to get it so it's stable enough that uh, it right. doesn't get real rough and then it doesn't help when guys go 50 miles an hour down it and slam on the brakes and yeah and gets get the washboardy washboard and everybody and everything yeah. else so and i'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that that more falls in the realm of the board of county commissioners because right, they, they prioritize <laughs> those projects but i would say from from our standpoint 
we put a lot of band-aids on it and it's beyond band-aids it's going right. to have to be fixed so that's right. that's going to bring it up some, yes, bring it to since, the attention yes, since the park, <laughs> yeah since the park didn't actually start until you get down close yeah, please, to uh, the reservoir mr kaufman yeah miss, uh, mr chairman i'd like to bring staff up to address this too if that's okay i'll put my road okay. and bridge hat on uh that road is is not owned by the county it it's shared with uh well, the ranching community out there, the BLM, the BO, Bureau of Reclamation, we can't spend lake fund monies on it until you get down to the last cattle guard going into the, the uh, Bishop's Point. And from there on, it's Bureau of Reclamation land, so lake funds monies could be spent in there. Um, the rest of the road is not a county road. We plow that road. Matter of fact, we're getting ready to take a rotary blower out there next week to open it for the derby that they're going to have. And uh, we have this last summer did uh, extensive work on the water holes that would swallow a Volkswagen. And um, the problem with it is, is it, it's a blowout road. A lot of the material gets blown out of there. And so the sides of the road are higher than the middle of the road. There's no drainage. Um, it's, everybody's aware of it. The county commissioner's aware of it. Um, we, we need to probably figure out a way to address more extensive care of the road. However, we, we really don't have any intent of opening the road all winter long. Uh, we spent a lot of money just getting it open for that one weekend if there's a lot of snow, and normally there is. But uh, So that's a story on that road. It's, it's uh, kind of no man's land, but we've done what we can. We've done a lot of grading of that road, but we have not put material on it till last year, and uh, we had to. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Next, don't be shy. Come on up. We don't bite. Heard. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't been anybody tonight. Going once, going twice. Okay, we'll move on to um, uh, board comments. So, you know, I'll start with you. You got a page and a half? You know, I made comments tonight. Circle this date on the calendar. Really? Don't have anything? Tina. I just want to thank everyone for coming. The public comments are appreciated. Um, we take all of them into consideration, and they're helpful for us um, to have your comments. Um, I think it's great that um, if we can expand and get the trail passes out there um, around the community, that would be great. Um, I know it'd be a real convenience for the users if they are in a sporting shop to buy their pass right there. Um, but again, thank you. Appreciate all your comments. Dave? I just want to say thank you to everybody that's come out tonight. And uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of changes coming. I mean, uh, a lot of improvements and everything else. I want to thank Commissioner Kaufman because... She has taken the initiative uh, from the county commissioner's side to go out and, and meet with, with the different special interest groups and start, start gathering information that hasn't been collected in the past. It's been kind of ignored. And so that's something that is going to make the parks board better. It's going to make everything go a whole lot better. We're looking forward to having Tim be here. Um, for those of you who, have, who haven't met him, uh, he's a he's a sharp cookie. He's going to be a good good addition to the team, and he's going to he's going to be a good leader. So it'll be good to have him on board. And I just want to encourage everybody to come out on the 28th. Um, you know, even if we disagree with each other on things, I mean, everybody's been real civil, and there's no reason not to be. You know, even though we don't agree on some things we can still make sure that, that everybody has their voice heard. And, and that's what we want to do because that's the only way we can make positive changes. So, thank you. Here, here, especially. Thank you, Commissioner Kaufman, for being here. I, we all appreciate that. Been very helpful. Um, so we've been going through kind of a trying time uh, with the, the loss of our parks director. And now we have the addition of a a new incoming parks director um we we will see some uh, some changes although i hope that the community will continue to come and give us uh, comments 
and input on our meetings. Uh, we welcome those public comments, written comments, whatever you have, we want to hear them. Uh, like Tina said, we do listen. We are hearing you. So uh, it may seem like it takes a while for it to actually hit the ground, but we do hear what you're saying. So we appreciate that. And I look forward to uh, Tim coming in and I know he's got a backlog coming. We, we talked about that. He'll have a few things to catch up on, um, but I'm excited. I think the, the future holds great promise for this county, and I'm very optimistic, and, and quite frankly, I'm kind of excited to see, see what we can do in the next 12 months. So that's my comment. And, and again, thank you all for coming, and thank you for your comments. With that, uh, need a motion. I make, make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.